worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he mighty? Hallelujah. Isn't he worthy? Hallelujah. He loves us so much. Hallelujah. Even when we don't love ourselves, he still loves us. Even when we are faithful to him, he is still faithful to us. Hallelujah. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. Hallelujah. And he is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. We shouldn't take it lightly yes. when it comes to giving our God some praise. Hallelujah. Yes. He blew his spirit into us. Hallelujah. When he created us. He said that we are good. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you. I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My husband and my daughter, my family, my sister, my mama. Hallelujah. All of my family and friends that are here today that came out to support me. I would like to acknowledge the set angel of this house, Pastor Linwood Grant. Hallelujah. And to share with you on this glorious morning, my bishop and my first lady in their absence to the officers and other constituents of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I greet you. Family and friends, Levisha, I see you back there. <laughs> That's my co-worker, hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you all. Hallelujah. This morning, if you can grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30, I will be reading from the King James Version, verses 1 through 8, and then also verses 18 and 19. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziglag. Where we at? And smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with them lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive, Ananon the Jezreelites and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to Abathar the priest and Ablican's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Verses 18 and 19 reads, And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil or anything that had taken them, had, that, that, that had taken to them, David recovered all. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today we come to celebrate your church 64th church anniversary. And I know that somebody is looking to get their stuff back. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, anticipate the aftermath. Anticipate the aftermath. My assignment on this morning is to encourage you to anticipate the aftermath. Anticipate what will happen after all of the loss after all of the damage, after all of the trouble. Anticipate every single promise that God promised you. Anticipate restoration, anticipate reestablishment, anticipate a season of change. The Bible says that there is a season for everything under the sun. Anticipate your joy returning. Anticipate your praise being stirred. Anticipate your peace. I have learned that when most people uh, tend to think of aftermath, they tend to think of all of the destruction that has taken place. They focus on the damage of things that have taken place. 
marriages being irreparable. But how many know that God will take the foolish things to confound the wise? When most think about aftermath, they tend to look at it like it is what it is. For example, I lost my home. My marriage seems unrepairable. My money keeps coming up short. My loved ones and I keep suffering from illnesses. Then when we look at the world around us, we focus on how broken it is and how lost this generation is and loved ones losing sight of identity. When we are in a storm, sometimes all we see is the storm. We don't see waves being made out of no way. We don't see bridges being made over troubled waters because we don't see it, sometimes we get discouraged. Therefore, I encourage you on today to anticipate the aftermath. We have to get to the place deep down inside our soul, believing that the average person usually takes on the perspective of viewing situations as it is what it is, meaning what you see is what you get. But when one is in relationship with Christ, the Bible encourages us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us from them all. It teaches us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It shows us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It reveals that trouble don't last always. In Jeremiah, the scripture makes known that God, he tears down to build up, to pluck up, and to plant. And in this pericope of 1 Samuel, David had some stuff going on in his life because of someone else's disobedience. Had Saul obeyed God, Ziglag would not have suffered the women being taken captive, uh -huh. and their sons and daughters being taken captive, and David's two wives would have not been taken. Everything was smitten and burned with fire. Everything that David loved was afflicted. It was consumed. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt consumed? Have you ever felt devastated by your challenges? Your challenges may not have been like David's, but you may have had some challenges that you were experiencing. Well, I came by this morning to tell you to anticipate the aftermath. Amen. David's children was taken captive. Yeah. You know, it's something when you mess with somebody's kids. You know how we get as parents, hallelujah. David's children were taken captive. And then the women were taken captive. And his two wives were taken captive. Husbands, you know how it is when somebody mess with your wife. Hallelujah. Ziklag, the place where they sojourned, it was burned with fire. It was a mess. Everything was destroyed. It was shattered by a nation of people that the Lord instructed Saul to destroy. And because of Saul's disobedience to destroy them, hallelujah, the disobedience brought upon ruin on the people of Israel. How many know that there was a price to pay when we are disobedient? The price may not affect us, but look at David and his men. They had no more power in them to weep. They couldn't weep no more. They couldn't weep anymore. It was so painful, the experience that they experienced when they went to Ziglag. And Saul's disobedience, it affected God's chosen leader, David. The one who ministered to Saul when he was down. The one who encouraged Saul when he felt depressed and worn out. The one who was willing and obedient being a servant of the Lord. Have you ever been there? Have you ever looked out for someone? And as soon as you blink your eye, you realize that they did not have your back. Someone would ask, well, what do you do in a situation like this? Well, David, he encouraged himself. He didn't depend on no one to lift him up. He took the word that he hid in his heart, and he conjured enough, enough strength to encourage himself in the Lord his God. He recognized the power of the Lord in his time of trouble. In the text, he asked Abathar to bring him an ephod. The ephod, it was used as a source of divine guidance. It is a priestly garment, like an apron. It's a garment that is worn over the priest's robe and under the breastplate. And at this time, David was not a priest over a nation, but he was a priest in his home. And when things in our home get out of control, we have to seek divine guidance from on high. 
We have to look up to the hills from which cometh our help. We have to seek him while he may be found. We have to believe that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond that we can think or expect. We have to stand on the word even when it looks dark. Even when the diagnosis has been made against us. Even when it looks like the end is near. Even when others have counted us out. Even when it does not logically make sense. The question I submit to you is, what good is it to know the word if you can't pull it out and use it? What good is it to have a relationship with Christ if you can't consult him in the midst of trouble? David, he used his resource of connection to get instruction on how to be victorious in his situation that appeared to be a losing battle. He held on to the promise of recover all. Therefore, I encourage you to use your resource of connection. Amen. And get your instruction to be victorious in your personal situation. And hold on to the promise of recover all. So again today, I encourage you to anticipate the aftermath. Encourage yourself. Use your resource of connection. And hold on to the promise that you shall recover all. Most believe that when a fire takes place and burns everything, that nothing can be revived after that. But we serve a king who was bruised for our iniquity yeah. and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He defeated death and he defeated the grave and was killed, buried, and yet resurrected with all power in his name. Yeah. Therefore, we have the ability through him to take back with the devil stone. Yeah. We can take back our joy. We can take back our children. We can take back our marriage. We can take back our hope. We can take back our love and, and take back our praise and, and our homes and our health. Everything that the enemy thought he stole, we have the ability through Christ to take it back. Why? Because in the midst of trouble, God said pursue. He said pursue. He said thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that loves us? Aren't you glad that we serve a God, hallelujah, that loves us? And not only does he love us, but he demonstrates his love towards us in spite of our inadequacies and in spite of our shadiness yeah. towards him. He still remains faithful even when we are unfaithful. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. The angels may bow down before him and heaven and earth adore him. Yeah. Studying these passages of scriptures, the Amalekites, they really thought that they could defeat the Lord's army. Yeah. They really thought in their minds that they could defeat the Lord. Hallelujah, when he is already conquered. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says in Psalms 24 that the earth is the Lord's. Yeah. Everything in this earth belongs to him. Yeah. And all the world that dwell therein. Yeah. Hallelujah. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. When he said, let there be. Hallelujah. And who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that hath clean hands and a, and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. And the God of his salvation. I'm telling you, God has control of everything. Even when things seem like they're out of control, he still has control. This is the generation that seek thy face, O Jacob. Hallelujah. So all of you that are weary and heavy laden, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, hallelujah, is the King of glory. He's strong and he's mighty. Hallelujah. He's mighty in battle. Yeah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Right. And the King of glory shall come in. Yeah. Who is this King of glory? Yeah. The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Yeah. And anytime we see the word Lord of hosts, we have to believe deep down in our soul that things are going to get better. Hallelujah. We have to believe that we have to anticipate the aftermath. Hallelujah. Because the Lord of hosts is the one that fights for us. He's the one that defends us. Hallelujah. And when we see that word, we have to know that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Things are going to get better. Hallelujah. The Lord wants us to change our perspective and always look for victory in every situation. Yeah. What the devil meant for evil, God will use it for your good. Yeah. Because in Christ there is always victory. Yeah. 
even when things don't seem like there is victory, even when you don't feel like there is hope, there is always victory. When there is no rays of light, understand there is always victory. His death, burial, and resurrection was not in vain. Hallelujah. It was for us the corruptible to inherit the incorruptible so that we can have life and life more abundantly. So that we can have the ability through him to overcome every situation that may try to set us back from the plan and purpose of God in our lives. So my brothers and sisters on today, you may be going through, but I encourage you to hold on a little while longer. Because victory is here. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself. Use your resource of hand and hold on to the promise that you shall recover all. Because we serve a merciful God. We serve a God who is full of compassion. We serve a God who is full of love. Hallelujah. A God who promised us perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. We serve a God that promised us victory over defeat. Hallelujah. A God that provided ways of escape in the wilderness. I don't know who this message is for today, but I know that you got to hold on a little while longer and don't give up. Hold on and pursue. God got a master plan, yeah, and it's yeah, just for yeah. you. Come on. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. Yeah, I yeah. want you to tell your neighbor to anticipate the aftermath. Yeah, anticipate the aftermath. Tell them like your breakthrough is right now. Anticipate the aftermath. Yeah, anticipate it. Anticipate it. Look forward to what God is about to do yeah. for you. Take your eyes off of what it looks like. In Hebrews 11, the Bible says, now faith is. Today, activate your faith. Tell your neighbor, activate your faith. There is no time like now to walk in faith. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. The Bible provides us with a parable that all we need is faith the size of a mustard seed. I just want to explain to you what this faith thing is. A mustard seed is a small round seed of various mustard plants. And the seeds are usually about one to two millimeters. Mustard seeds generally take three to ten days to germinate if placed under proper conditions. Which include a cold atmosphere, relatively moist, a mature mustard plant grows into scrubs, and with that in mind, we need to understand that in order for our faith to grow, or rather cultivate, that we have to be placed in cold conditions. Conditions that are uncomfortable. Conditions that challenge us to trust Him. Hallelujah. Conditions that we don't want to be in if the truth be told. Hallelujah. We don't want to go through nothing. But this is how our faith develops. It develops by being placed in conditions that are uncomfortable. Conditions that are seemingly uncomfortable. The word cold means having relatively low temperature, having little or no warmth, feeling of an uncomfortable lack of warmth, chilled, having a temperature lower than normal temperature of the human body. It lacks passion, emotion, enthusiasm. It's not affectionate, nor is it cordial or friendly. It's unresponsive. It lacks desire, failing to excite or interest. Faith grows through this process of development while God is developing and maturing our faith. We got to continue to praise him in the midst of all of that. Know that there are different sizes of faith. But today, God wants you to just trust him. Trust that he got you. Trust that he that he has given you permission to fight for what is yours and to take it back with authority. I'm not talking about taking something that don't belong to you. But I'm talking about the things that the enemy took from you that belong to you. That's not legally yours. I'm talking about taking back what the enemy stole from your possession that belong to you. Hallelujah. So that you can recover all. Now today I want you to stand and shabak him for what he is about to do. I want you to shabak him because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. I want you to shabak him because he sits up high and he looks down low. Hallelujah. That our God is positioning us for a breakthrough. That will testify that our God is an awesome God. He knows that our faith has been weak, but on today He sent me to tell you to anticipate the aftermath. He sent me today to tell you to 
the man. Because you shall recover all. He knows that you have been weary. But on today, he wants me to remind you, don't be weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. He knows that you have been feeling weak in your spirit. But he wants me to remind you that his strength is made perfect in your weakness. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. How many know that we serve an incredible God? How many know that he is great? Well, why don't you magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If he would deliver Daniel in the lion's den, what more would he do for you? If he showed up in the fiery furnace of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what more will he do for you? If he was bruised for our iniquities and the chest of our peace was upon him and he died and yet rose again on the third day, he will rise up for our situation. God is a good God and he's greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, I get two or three people to give God your best praise for recovery. I get you to pray them like they lost your mind. All that men would praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. of person. When he created you, he had some wonderful things in mind for each and every last one. And I don't know if this word was for everybody or if it was for one person or, or two people or three, but if this word was for you, why don't you stand to your feet? I want to speak something to you. I want you to be courageous and don't be dismayed. Yes, I want you to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and acknowledge him in all of your ways. And he will direct your path. Even though times 
have been tough, yes. he has never left you. Yes. He has always been yes. right there with yes. each and every last one of you. I want you to grab your neighbor's hand yes, and I want you to speak this into your neighbor's life. Anticipate the aftermath. I want to share something with you really quick. I have been dealing with some challenges for the last five years from two miscarriages to three lung surgeries. And my last surgery was extremely tough. I have been dealing with lung issues and the doctors, they have no idea what is causing my problem with my lung. I have blood workups from CT scans to PET scans, from chest tubes, breathing machines, DNCs, and thoracotomies. And despite all the trauma to my body, what helped me to stand was a word that God gave me. And he had spoke to my heart one day while I was at work. I was at work and I went into uh, one of the dean's office who happens to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> but I went into his office and I said, you know what? I'm tired of being strong. I just want five minutes of feeling me. I said, I got a lot going on and I just need five minutes to just sit in here and just feel weak just for five minutes. I didn't want no pity party. I didn't want nobody pat me on my back and say it was going to be okay. I just needed five minutes to just have a moment. You know, because when you are a strong person, everybody always expects you to be strong. You know, and I just needed five minutes to just feel me. And I sat in his office and I said, you know, I just got a lot going on and I'm, I'm you know, I'm not losing my mind. I'm just, I'm just having a moment and I just need to, I need just five minutes by myself. And after I left his office, I'm on my way home. You know how you have like the Bible app and you get an alert on your phone? Yeah. The alert said, have I not commanded thee to be strong in the Lord? And don't be dismayed, for I am with you always. And that word helped me. And then the next day I woke up and I went to work and I opened up my Bible. And another scripture came to mind. The Lord told me to turn to Jeremiah 30, verse 17. The scripture says, for I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. That's all I needed. I just needed a word from the Lord to encourage me so that I can get my breakthrough, so that I can manage my day and my week. And until God decides to manifest his healing, that I have that word to stand on. And I'm telling you, when I got that, I, 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 I could, all I could do was just tell all my coach, because the Lord just told me he going to restore health. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. when you're going through. I don't know what anybody's situations are. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're going through, and especially when you have a health impairment and you can't breathe, Jesus. You know, your air quality is not like, you know, the person standing next to you. I don't want to be, I'm, look, I'm 40. I don't want to walk around with no oxygen tank. Yeah. I have work to do in the kingdom. Yeah. And I need healing. Yeah. And I say, God, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the promise. And I'm sharing that with you. Because no matter what your circumstance is, if you are connected to Christ, expectation of his power being released in your life should always be anticipated. After every storm, the sun will shine. I want you to stand strong and meditate on his word day and night. Because he loves you. And with his loving kindness, he has drawn you. Because the Lord wants to do a new thing yes, Lord. in all of our lives. Hallelujah. I want you to encourage yourself, right. use your resource of connection, yes. and hold on Hallelujah. to the promise that you shall recover. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.